Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm super excited to be here. How is everyone in the chat? I see so many familiar faces and friends. I see uh, Emma is here. I'm doing wonderful, Emma. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well too. Um, I see Manisha and Wade, the one and only. I see Brennan, uh, Benjamin, Karen. It's so good to see all of you folks. Steve Festus Casaboom, the man with the name. It is good to see you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, for those of you who uh, maybe are just diving in um, at the beginning of the Adobe Live Day, um, maybe you've never been here before. Um, I am Voodoo Val. I am a digital painter um, and graphic designer. I usually am here hanging out on Adobe, either moderating in the chat or doing some graphic art, um, some Photoshop daily creative challenges and painting stuff here on the stream. Um, and I am going to do like kind of a solo design stream for a couple of days for you folks um, for today and tomorrow, same time. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do like kind of a, like a multi app workflow, like a cross app workflow for you folks. Um, and I'm going to start in Photoshop. I'm going to start concepting out, um, some illustrations, uh, and then I'm going to move into fresco on the iPad and paint it up. And then we're going to dive into some of the export options available to you, uh, via fresco. We're going to export a time-lapse, um, the time lapse footage for that. And then we're actually going to jump into Resh and we're going to edit ourselves um, a time lapse video for YouTube with intro and outro. Uh, we're going to explore some of the awesome call outs and animations and transitions and effects you can do um, in Rush. And I, I really would like to show you folks how easy it is for you to kind of start making videos and start making process um, tutorials and things. It's very, very easy with Fresco and Rush. So um, yeah, without further ado, um, I'm going to jump over to Photoshop and we're just going to kind of start sketching around. Um, um, or maybe we should do a few kind of announcements first. For those of you who are on YouTube, please come over um, to Behance because that is where um, I am reading the chat. Um, and then we can also take a look at the schedule right quick before I dive in and, and forget about that <laughs> because we do have um, a wonderful lineup for today. Um, I'm uh, going to be um, doing this stream uh, from, like it says, uh, 12 um, or noon uh, Pacific time. Um, illustration to video for today and tomorrow until 2 p.m. And then we're going to have um, the XD hosted replay of the Daily Creative Challenge uh, with Andrea Epi right after me. Um, and it's going to be very similar with um, some slight differences tomorrow. So you guys can show up for a very similar lineup tomorrow. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's let's kind of jump into what we've got planned um, for today. I'm going to go ahead and start um, sketching. I've made an artboard. Uh, file here. Uh, and my goal for this project is I would really like to um, create something ahead of time that I can post like around Valentine's Day, um, because Valentine's Day is not too far off. Um, and a mistake that I always make when I know that like a holiday or an event is is coming up is I'm like, oh, I'll paint something that I can post to social media when I get there. Um, and then I never finish it. And then I don't have anything to post. And then I post something three days later when all the fun and awesomeness is over and it's very late. So I'm uh, taking the initiative today and I am going to actually do this when I, you know, ahead of time when I have time. Um, so I've started artboards. Um, if you're unfamiliar with artboards, um, the way that you use these is you, if you come over here to your um, your move tool, you will find the artboard tool under there. Um, you will have had to click the artboards um, uh, button when you make your new uh, file, however, so I'm going to pull that up right quick. If I just say new, it'll pull that up for me. Uh, let me pull this down onto my Cintiq. Uh, you want to make sure that this little button right here um, is actually clicked uh, so that you can use artboards uh, within your file. Um, but then once I have my artboards uh, kind of, you know, it'll start me off with one, um, I can come in here and click my artboard tool um, and I can actually click all around here. Um, and start adding new ones around however I want. It's it's actually really cool. And then I have all of these individual um, pieces that I can start. And it's something that I like to do just to kind of keep myself in like a concepting mode because um, I, I want to be able to see all these different lineups of illustrations we're going to test out for today. Um, so I'm going to grab, I think I'll probably grab my um, Bloco brush um, and I'm just going to do some sketches. And I would love to hear any input 
that you have um, for what I should do. Cause I'm gonna do like a cute creature or character. Um, but if anybody in chat has any ideas they'd like for me to add in, please feel free. Um, I see Manisha is asking, is there any option to make time-lapse in Fresco? Yes, I'm gonna be showing you that today. Um, there is a time-lapse feature. Um, it's actually recording a time-lapse for you at all times. Um, and all you have to do when you go to export, instead of exporting it as an image, like a PNG or a JPEG, um, you just go to time-lapse export and it pulls up the video and boom, there's your entire painting from start to finish, every stroke you made on that canvas. Um, and you can play it and preview it and then you can export it to Creative Cloud. And then when you open Rush or Premiere or After Effects or whatever, um, you can go into and you know find your, find your time-lapse file um, and edit it. So it's very, very useful. Um, I see Brennan is saying he's from Houston. Welcome in Brennan. Um, and who is this? I see someone, Polk Music, good to see you. And Don, welcome in. And I think I saw Eric Sue as well. Um, so I'm going to kind of give myself like a lineup. I'm gonna go for a similar style that I've been doing. Um, if any of you folks caught the daily creative challenge for Photoshop recently, um, I have a series that I've started um, that has a lot of, um, actually, I think I have a library um, that I can pull up that has all of my um, my stuff in it so I can show you what I'm going for here. Uh, let's see, maybe we can go into villagers. Um, I'm gonna do kind of a style like this, um, like a painted style, but I'm gonna do something a little more in depth um, and a little more uh, with more elements because for these what I have is just like one character head um, and then like just like a textury background but what I really want to do is something that has like more items kind of lounging in the background behind our character um, so I'm kind of laying this out so I have like this is about how much space I want my character to take up um, and I'm going to come back to my layers I'm going to turn this down on a low um, opacity um, Maybe I'll make it slightly bigger, like I want something like this. But I know that I also want kind of a collection of items. I mean, I think maybe though it's a little cliche, like something that wouldn't hurt is to put like a big heart in the background because I am going to be waiting to post this on Valentine's Day. Um, so we can have like, um, maybe this is like the frame for the heart that's in the background. So I just know I want it to fill this kind of space so I can just kind of sketch my, my heart in here. Um, I kind of like a, a, like a squat kind of chunky looking heart instead of like a round or a, a long defined heart. I like that. Um, so I'm going to leave that sketch in here. Um, maybe I'll make this larger if this is the frame for our background item. Um, and then what I could also do is similar to what I did here. If I come back to my libraries, I did a, um, I'm going to actually make my libraries larger so you folks can see it. Um, I did a painting here, like a couple's painting of two people that have um, Animal Crossing characters. And I put like, I kind of decorated the canvas with like these little starbursts. So um, something that could be interesting is maybe we do like the same thing, but with hearts. Maybe there's like, you know, little, little bursts of, of love you may say around the canvas so I could kind of like start sketching this and what do you guys think any any ideas uh Beverly it's good to see you welcome in um uh Christelle welcome in it's good to see you um let's see do we have any more uh new folks um can we view this somewhere recorded after absolutely this will be available on the creative cloud um YouTube channel as well as here um some of you folks may not know if you actually scroll down below the video player uh, right here, you'll see all of our videos archived by category. Um, so if you want to come back and kind of check out all of the different categories that we have, I will be in probably the illustration category and maybe after we get into Rush sometime tomorrow, I may also be in the video editing category. Um, so you can always come back and check that out and maybe find something else that you would like to watch. Um, so much bursts of love. I know we are we are spreading the lerf. Um, with this uh, with this illustration. Now, what what do you think we should actually choose for our little creature? I was thinking because something I like to do is um, uh, kind of choose something that's supposed to be scary um, and make it adorable. 
Um, Cause I did like, I've done like cute little Cthulhu's. I've done cute like Dracula paintings. I've done cute, um, I think I did a cute Krampus recently for Christmas and they're really, really fun to do. Uh, so maybe we could do something like that. What do you guys think? Um, how am I drawing? I am using a Wacom Cintiq um, 16 HD um, to, to paint on. And then uh, I will jump into actually painting in fresco on my iPad Pro. I have an iPad Pro 12.9 uh, inch iPad and it's a second generation. Uh, so it's, I, I believe the second generation is the first generation that you could have that was um, compatible with the Apple Pencil. Um, and I have the first the first model for the Apple Pencil. Um, sloths would be really cute. A piglet Cupid would be adorable. Okay, I'm, I'm liking these. I'm really liking these. So we have like kind of a background going and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think... I think this is good enough. Like it's, it kind of gets the point across. Like we know that we want like kind of a, a cool like collection of things happening back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this one um, and then I am going to duplicate it, control J so that I just have that there. Um, and I'm gonna call this two and I like to stack it this away. Um, and then I am going to duplicate that one move it down. I'm going to call that uh, three. Um, ooh, that's a four, three. <laughs> and then I'll do one more. Um, and I'm going to call this um, four. So now I have um, what I'm going to do is have like four different ideas here. Um, and I'm going to grab my artboard tool and I am going to actually reposition them so that I have them all um, kind of stacked nicely right here so I can keep an eye on all of them um, at once. Um, and then I'm going to start like kind of sketching in the ideas that you folks um, have given me. So I'm going to turn uh, this down even more just so I can barely see them. Um, and let's go for it. So somebody said a sloth. <laughs> somebody said sloth. That was Julian. Um, so I'm going to see if it would be cute if we did like a little you know, sloths, I imagine when I, when I draw their little heads, I imagine that they're kind of, they're kind of round, but like oval, like an egg turned on its side a little bit. Um, so I would say maybe we could do something like this. So here's like our little sloth head. Maybe he has like a tiny little hairdo, you know, maybe he has little slothy hair. Um, and then I think that he would probably have um big eyes that are pretty far apart this is like gonna look a little derpy up until we you know we get it together i'm just gonna you know these are concepts we're concepting in photoshop i'm getting my ideas out on the canvas and it doesn't have to look good um i think that's something that's really important for all of you to keep in mind when you're illustrating when you are um doing you know, graphic art or whatever, when you're creating your first initial concept, do not get stuck and trapped in, oh, it doesn't, like the sketch doesn't look good. Um, if you only knew how many of my sketches look like absolute gar garbage, just total garbo before I um, actually make something that is good, um, it would probably surprise you. Um, and I would hope that it would make you feel a lot better about yourselves because I feel like you look at people's, you know, finished work and you're like, oh, they, it must be good like the whole time. And if mine's not good the whole time, then maybe I'm doing something wrong. Mine is not good until like the end. And I'm like, oh, finally, it's good now. <laughs> so um, don't worry if your your first initial sketch is not that great looking. Just Just get the idea down. Um, I'm gonna give him like a little, like a little nose wrinkle. This is a little, um, kind of a flat, ovally nose, I think is kind of cute there. Um, and then I'm thinking that he has a really wide smile. Um, that's like a, like a very pleasant, like closed mouth smile. You know, like that's like a little, I think that's really cute actually. What do you guys think? I actually think that's adorable. Um, so there's our little sloth and maybe he has little blushies that look like hearts, you know, heart blushies, because who doesn't need heart blushies in their life? Am I right? Am I right, chat? 
I think I am. You guys will have to tell me. Um, Bahana, it's good to see you. Um, Jahir, uh, welcome in. Um, Amar, hello, it's good to see you. Welcome in everyone. Um, I think Benjamin also said a piglet Cupid. So um, uh, <laughs> Wade says, I treat everything like a rescue mission. <laughs> I think that's a perfect way to put it. Every time I start painting and drawing, especially, I will tell you folks, especially when I'm painting, on a live broadcast, I'm like, here goes. Hope I don't ruin it. <laughs> here it goes. Let's see if we can if we can get this going. Um, and it's it's a it's you know it's okay. It really is. I think we we kind of trap ourselves into thinking that everything must be great the very first time we do it. And if we don't, then we're not very good at what we do. But it's just not true. Um, Okay, I feel like there needs to be something else that makes this look like a sloth. Um, like maybe he has some kind of like, you know, like thing on his face that like gives him like a shape, I think. I don't know, Do, like, let me look, let me look. I think I'm gonna type in sloth um, because I feel like I need to pull up some reference just to look at a sloth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sloths have like a little kind of, you know, like a, a brighter part of their face. And then they have like this little like kind of thing coming down around the eyes, like a darker, yeah, there we go. I might change the kind of eyes that I give him. I might, honestly, I might give him just like um, these almond, shaped eyes that's slightly darker um than the uh dark space that i put on his over his eyes you know like maybe he has um you know like that and then what we can do is we can take some white and we can put like a little a little shine um I don't know if that's as cute, but we'll see. We'll see once we get into it. So there's our little, our little really super adorable sloth. Um, he's very loving. I think he's very, very loving. I think he's super cute. He's got a little hairdo um, and that's cute. Um, maybe we should put like his little sloth hands. I don't know, like in front of them, maybe clasped. I don't know. But I think I think the more that I add, um, like, and the more I detail, it will start to, um be obvious to anyone that looks at it that it is a sloth maybe we should put some kind of sloth tagline on it um you know i don't know <laughs> i don't know what a sloth would say on valentine's day you folks will have to help me out with that um he does do they i don't know can you see the sloth ears andrea did do, do, do sloths have like very specific ears i don't think they do i think they're like buried under the strange ecosystem of their fur i don't know if i like see them um i am gonna however leave myself a little defining line here uh, a much thinner line kind of around the nose to remind myself that i do need to make like his nose separate maybe darker um, and I'm gonna lasso this mouth real quick. Um, and there we go, just kind of bump it like so. Boom, there's a little loving sloth. Okay, um, we have a sloth. Now we need, what do we need? Are we, we, doing, a, we doing a piglet? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever drawn a piglet. Um, Benjamin is saying TMNT and I like, I like the way you think. Um, uh, it's it's entirely possible that we could go to the turtles in a half shell um, route with this. Um, so let me try let me try a piglet real quick. Um, it's entirely possible also that the piglet will be a nightmare, an, an actual nightmare and disaster. But let's try it. It would be cute actually though to do a pig, piglet just because you know we could make it pink and gray. So here's like a little. That's a piglet. There we go, guys. Nailed it. Finished. <laughs> um, it would be cute maybe to do the kind of piglet where it is literally just a circle and like some little pig legs, um, like so, you know, something like that. Um, and maybe the, there, maybe there's no, <laughs> what if there's no head? What if this, what if this pig has no neck and then it just has like it's little pig ears. I'm trying not to make it look like a kitty cat because I don't want that. But 
What if it has like its little pig ears and then like its pig nose? Um, maybe we could make its body like the shape of a bean so that it has like a little arch in its back, a little arch in its step. And then maybe we, maybe we, <laughs> maybe this little leg is like kicking out. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a pig of love. Um, it sings, this pig is a singer. Um, that's canon now that this pig sings. Um, this this pig is like, yeah, here we go. It's got its little, its little legs kind of, you know, and then maybe we'll pull this one like, you know, forward. This, these are pig legs. This is the, an accurate uh, rendition of actual pig legs. Um, okay, there's our little, oh, and obviously um, we need to add a pig tail because what, what would this pig, pig be without a, a pig tail? Um, we'll do like a little, obviously it's gonna be a curly cue. Um, maybe just one Q, maybe just one curl. There we go. I'm liking that. I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, make pointing Q eyes. Oh, like, like, like the, um, like anime eyes kind of, that would be cute. Okay. We can do that. It's like the opposite of uwu. Just, <laughs> I know at least one person in chat just physically cringed when I said uwu and I sort of apologize for it, but not quite. Maybe I'm gonna, hold on. I am gonna make them like serious anti uwu eyes. They're gonna be like, like little, no, 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 no. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe they're not yous. Maybe they're, that's a little in between. I'll do like in between. Um, maybe this is got like little lines. There's lines. Um, I like it. There's a little, there's a little mouth. <laughs> this is so cute. This is, this is not even close to being a nightmare pig. This is adorable. I'm proud of myself guys. Okay. There's a little pig. There's like a little flying piglet. Also, he would have a butt shine because a butt shine and a head shine, maybe, eh, maybe just a butt shine and a nose shine, I think, because obviously this pig is like, very smooth, very shiny, and he's frolicking in the air and we're gonna do some cool lighting and stuff on him. So there needs to be like a little, like a, a shine that's like reminiscent of a balloon shine, you know, like, you know, kind of across the top of him, like there. There we go. Happiest piglet alive. Okay, so there's, we have a, a sloth sketch. We have a pig sketch. Um, what else folks, lay it on me. What are we doing? Um, we've, we've, been, we've been drawing for about, 30 minutes. Um, I think we have time for a couple more, but let's see if we can get them done a little faster. And then I'm going to, I'm going to pick one and we're going to flip over to um, Fresco and we're going to start painting it. And um, if, if we can, we may even get to do like a couple of these. So, and then, and then choose which one we think is best and we want to um, put into the time lapse. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Wade, that's perfect. Um, the, the, the saying for the sloth, for the sloth, uh, card here, maybe they're cards. I don't know. Um, we can say, <laughs> hold on, no, let's take it slow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. I think it's great. <laughs> um, I don't know what the pig one is. Um, this is a pig. Yeah, it is a pig, RB. Welcome in. Um, a werewolf, a horse. Um, I don't know if I'm good at drawing werewolves or horses. I'm be perfectly honest. Um, a vampire. A vampire could work, Benjamin, just because I feel like vampires are like, you know, a lot of people think that they're like romantic. I find them terrifying, but you know, it would be kind of cool maybe to do like a cute vampire card. Um, turtle, I know you, somebody said TMNT. Um, it's possible that I could give the people what they want with that, but I've never, I don't think I've ever drawn a Ninja Turtle. Um, and there's four of them. 
So I feel like maybe that would be better off as like a like a series of some kind later. I'll do a sketch. I'll do a sketch. And while I do that sketch, I want you folks to um, continue to, to brainstorm because we got another one here that we can fill. I'm going to do like a quick sketch and just see if I can do something that like looks good. And if I if I can't do TMNT properly, then if you know, like if you can't do it justice, we shouldn't do it at all. Um, so that's that's gonna be the ruling on that. If it's atrocious, we'll just pretend it never happened. You didn't see anything. <laughs> All right, let me make his head a little wider. Boom. Um, and let's do, I know that with these, he's gonna have like cheeks and then this middle part is like pretty large, like his mouth, cause the mouth on, the Ninja Turtles is like pretty, you know, pretty prominent. Um, and then they have like their little, their little uh, eye masks, you know, like this. And they usually have like their little eye holes, uh, like so. Um, and then their brow, I would think their brow um, comes up like that and then maybe um, it's not awful, but I don't, I think I would have to spend like a lot more time making this look like super, super good, you know, because if it's going to be like fan art of something, then it would have to be like recognizable and pretty accurate. And I don't know if we have like the time for how much detail I would want to put on to this thing. Um, but there, I, you get, you see me sketch like a nightmare turtle. Um, but I don't think, I don't think we'll go that route as far as the thing, but there's a, there's a sketch, <laughs> there's a sketch for it. I tried for you. Um, chipmunk, hedgehog, porcupine. Ooh, hedgehogs though, or a rhino. Um, that's adorable rabbit. Uh, my heart races for you. That's cute. Okay. Uh, we could do, um, Let's, let's do, let's, let me try a rabbit. Let me try a rabbit. Let's see. Um, now we have, there's a lot of ways that you could do um, like a rabbit drawing. You could do a rabbit that's like, you know, this, uh, you know, with the ears forward. Um, you could do a rabbit that is like, you know, with ears back, like hair. That's kind of something that's a possibility with a little neck, you know, and then little shoulders. That's actually kind of cute right there. And then maybe the nose is up here. Um, and maybe there's just like little happy eyes. Um, and maybe there's a bow. Maybe there's a little bow in her hair. Cause it kind of looks like a, you know, like a girl hairstyle when you have like the ears back like that. And we'll do like little whiskers and then a little bunny mouth. Um, something like that could be interesting. You could do um, just like straight, like maybe we do like a straight on like kind of cute thing. Like if anyone's familiar with cat dog, <laughs> if you guys know, if you guys know about cat dog, um, the, the, that one bunny character that's like, he, he plays every other character except for cat and dog. Like he's the mailman, he's the mayor, he runs the taco shop. He's, he's every other character except for cat and dog. Um, and the, and the, the greaser dogs that pick on them. Um, but maybe we do, maybe we do like kind of a head shape like his, um, which is that it's like very, um, it's very boxy. It's very like, you know, um, and then maybe we just do like cute eyes, something like that could be interesting. Um, of course it's not like really as crazy as the rest of, um, the sketches. Um, I'm almost wondering if we should just do the sloth because the sloth and the pig look pretty darn good. Um, and I kind of want to jump into fresco pretty soon because we've been at this for about a half hour. Um, maybe I will, um, uh, maybe I will just go ahead and work on the sloth. And then um, if I come up with any more or work on any more of these sketches by tomorrow, 
um, I can bring them um, kind of to the table as well. Um, so maybe we'll do that. What do you guys think? Just kind of dive into to doing some painting. Ooh, that made her not look happy anymore. <laughs> there we go. She's a little happy bunny. That's cute. Um, my heart squeals for you, <laughs> the pig. That's terrifying, but I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I'm gonna put that down. Or, well, he's jumping. He's jumping, so it could also say, like, my heart leaps for you. Um, my heart. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put leaps, because it's, like, along the same line, so we'll, like, come, kind of combine our ideas. Leaps for you. Um... Um, there's just, you know, some ideas. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take these, these two, like the pig and the sloth, and we're going to see what, what we do. So, um, I'm going to kind of switch over to my cam here. Um, and I'll let you guys, um, kind of talk with me and hang out with me for a little while while I actually, I'm going to switch over to my iPad. Um, so, um, and also continue to, um, like, you know, kind of chat and, and put in any ideas. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. The rabbit don't care at all. That's great. Clever Devlin. Um, very, very clever, clever guy there. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to save to my creative cloud. Um, but I'm going to jump over to my face cam if I could real quick. Um, and because I have some files over yonder here that I don't know if they're going to come up in my icons um, and they're secret, they're top secret. So let me see if I can bump over one moment, folks. Let me see. There we go. Um, all right. And then let me grab my, I'm going to save to Creative Cloud. So um, I'm going to call this uh, Valentine's and I'm going to save. Um, and then I'm going to pull up my iPad right quick. Um, and it might give us, um, I might need to like kind of load for just a moment um, because I need to see, um, I've just saved it to my creative cloud. Um, and the thing about you know, saving is it does need just a tiny bit of time, you know, to, to, do, its, to do its thinking. There we go. And now I'm going to share my iPad with y'all so that you can see. Give me one moment. Um, it's a larger file, so it's doing its little thinking, but it's already on my iPad. Like I have my iPad um, here and it's already got its little um, thinking thing. While I wait for it, I will put my Cintiq down and set up my iPad. What I may do is, um, it looks like it's having trouble with my artboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my sketches um, for my sloth and my pig. And I'm actually going to um, jump into a new file. I'll say create new. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create a non artboard um, file here and I am going to say create, and I'm just going to drop my um, sketches into here. Can I control copy and control paste? Boom, there's our sloth. And we'll just work on the sloth for now. Um, and then now I'll put, the, I'll put the pig in there. Let's see, let's grab our pig. Um, control E to merge. Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So now I have both of these in here and I will save this as well. Um, control save um, to cloud documents. Um, and um, I will call this Valentine's as well. Valentine's two, okay. Boom, there it goes, saved. And I should be able to refresh my iPad um, and pull that up. And while I wait for it to do that, I will set it up here. 
There we go. I should be able to open it on my iPad. It's opening and then I will share it so that you folks can take a peek. Awesome. Okay. Let me share my iPad with you real quick. There we go. Okay. Give it a little moment there and you guys will see it come up. Okay. I'm going to grab my Apple pencil and give them one, give me one moment. I'm just making sure you folks can see um, the, oh, let me actually, one second. There we go. Okay, so um, you should be able to see um, my iPad. So I've jumped into Fresco um, and I have everything set up. So you should be able to see um, all of my, my little sloth, my cute little guy here. Um, and I also have, so it's kind of transferred over that file that I could, you know, through the creative cloud. So Valentine's two is what I named it, if you remember. And I have um, both of those layers so I can hide my sloth and I can click on my pig layer here and I have my pig. Um, and it's really, really easy to, you know, to kind of do that. Um, so I think what we're going to do um, right now is um, we are going to kind of turn my pig layer or my sloth layer onto a lower opacity. Um, and I'm going to just start like painting and, and jumping in here with um, some line art. So um, let me grab my brush. Um, now, I have a couple of ways that I like to approach this. Um, I can do it either like doing line off. Oh, you know what? I think I may need to um, turn my, uh, pair my Apple pencil so that it's going to give me a um, my ability to draw here. So let's switch back over to my face cam real quick while I do that. Um, but I can kind of talk to you guys about my process while I'm pairing it. So um, basically, uh, I either will jump into a sketch um, and kind of do line art um, immediately uh, and you know, create the line art, do everything that I um, want to do and get like the details of it down. Or what I will do is I will jump into um, just making large shapes and, and start to paint over the large shapes. Okay, we are good to go. Um, so I can come in, like I said, I can do um, some sketches and like do like precise liner and just start cleaning it up as I go. Um, this is one of the live brushes, but I think the brush that I would like to use um, for it is if I go to my favorites, um, I've got this hard pastel that I really like to use and um, I can come in and start um, sketching, I can make it bigger. Um, you can make your your brush bigger by over here on the right hand side. If I just like um, kind of click this, I can come in and like type in a uh, numeral amount for my size, or I can just click it and I can use like my slider here. So if I want to make this a little larger, maybe smaller than that, actually, um, if I drag it down to like a 50, I can come in, I can start um, really uh, finalizing the shape of our sloth's head um, and kind of getting this in here really good. There we go. Um, and then, like I said, with the like blocking things out, it's like I could come in here and I could, you know, do all of this um, and or I could go in underneath it and I could just say like, you know, let's grab like a, a big, you know, gray size thing here. Um, I'll make a new layer underneath everything and I could come in with my large brush um, and just usually what I'll do is I'll literally just like color in like a huge shape of the head and then use clipping masks 
um, to kind of get the point across. And then after I have all of these big blocky shapes kind of thrown in here and everything looks good, um, I can come in with a, with a smaller brush later and like add some, some details. So there's a lot of ways that you can do it. Um, you can kind of choose a way that works for you if you're working along with me, or if you're thinking about jumping into Fresco, it's really up to you. Um, but what I might do is just have like a big shape for his head. Um, and then do, um, some, uh, just a tiny bit of line art over the top of it. I think that would probably be for the best. Uh, let me grab, I'm gonna hide my layers there. I'm gonna grab my black again. I'm gonna turn this down just a tiny bit, make it a little bit smaller um, and let's clean it up. Um, maybe not on my, uh, my eraser. I do that frequently where I have my eraser prepared um, for, and I I'll change the size of my eraser and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and then I go to draw and I'm wondering like why I'm not putting paint down. Um, all right, here we go. There is, and you can turn your, you can rotate your canvas, which is really, really helpful for me. It's one of my favorite features, the ability just to um, turn this with my fingers as if I'm using a real piece of paper. Um, here we go. I'm gonna kinda, you can see I don't really, I, I try not to undo my strokes and focus too much um, on how perfect they are. If I don't like a, a, a stroke, uh, more times than not, I will either just use it and erase, like kind of shave away from the sides of it after a while. Um, and I just try to do my very best to get things as clean um, as I can. Another thing that you can do, like if you're doing some wine art, um, is you can come down here to smoothing um, and you can turn the smoothing up. The smoothing is very helpful. In fact, I didn't even have it on and I didn't do a bad job there, like kind of outlining that. So um, I do kind of want to bring this in right here. So I'll erase kind of shave from there and then I will, there we go. So now we have our little head here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select um, here you can, uh, in those little three dots thing on the side here in Fresco, you can say, so you can click there and say select multiple and you can select multiple things here. Now, what I can do is I can continue to select multiple layers um, whenever I want to do what I'm what I want to do now. And that is um, kind of transform and like bump this over so that it's in the center here all together. Um, I can do that or um, I can continue to um, do it very easily without having to select all of them at once. If I keep this selected on multiple and hit this folder here, and that just put all of those into a group for me, which is really nice. So now I have a group with all of my sloth assets away from my, my pig assets. Um, and I can just double click that. And then there's all the stuff I'm working on. So um, I've got my, my head shape here. Let's make another layer. Um, and then maybe we can dive, dive into um, kind of outlining his eyes. Let's see if we can get these in here the way that we want. Um, I kind of want to do, like I said, like these little um, almond kind of eyes, I think. Um, unless maybe it's possible that a sloth's eyes would look better as like round eyes, but I kind of think that's cute. You guys will have to let me know what you think. Um, Bacon, Clover says. Bacon, yes. Um, what's up, Golden Rose? It's good to see you. Um, RB, uh, thank you for still sticking around. Um, Emma says, I'm falling in love with this guy. He looks like an angry tomato. He does look like an angry tomato. I love it. That's a great way of putting it. Little, little angry tomato. Angie tomato. Um, all right. So there's like some, some eye shapes. Um, I don't think that looks too bad. I think it kind of adds like this nice, um, maybe I can bring this down and bring that out. I think it adds like a nice little kind of shape to his eyes. Um, and I'll bring that one in and we'll bring this one in so that it looks, there we go. That's kind of cool. We might, we might change it. You know, we might continue on and realize that it doesn't suit us that's fine um, but for now we will leave it and i am going to also let's try to kind of get a little nose out of here um, and i'm gonna peek uh real quick at my sloth reference just because i you know i pulled up a little 
little sloth uh, photos. They are so cute um, and they do have like little, little, you know, button noses kind of. Um, some of them are very small and some of them are very large. So I think it would be cool if we experimented with both. So let's, let me turn my brush down actually. I'm gonna make a new layer away from the eyes and I'm going to kind of sketch out this shape we have for the nose here. And then I'm gonna experiment with making it smaller and larger and see what we prefer. So there's his little nose. Let's maybe give him like a little kind of directional lines on this so that when I go to make it 3D, I kind of remember how I'm gonna shade this. Um, I'm not, when I say make it 3D, I don't mean that I'm actually gonna be working in 3D. I mean that I am going to be um, rendering it and well, I shouldn't use the word render too because I know that's that confuses some people. I mean that I'm gonna detail this. I'm gonna start painting it and making it look like it occupies a 3D space without actually making it 3D. So let's see what this looks like if I make this nose bigger. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if that's for me. I think it might, I think it might need to just be a baby nose, a tiny nose. Maybe, oh, maybe higher, <laughs> maybe, maybe higher close to the, um, close to the eyes. I don't know. We'll see. Nah, maybe, honestly, maybe right where it was. Well, we'll leave it. We'll leave it for now. We'll, we'll see as we get towards, maybe right there. Okay, done. Um, and then what we want to do is I'm going to come in here between the eye and the head and I'm going to kind of draw our little eye shape because he is going to have like that little, you know, eye shape of his. There we go. So he has his little sloth eyes. It's like, it's like sloths are all very secretly um, not telling us about the fact that they're like superheroes. Um, and, and it's like, we should know because they all have their little masks on at all times, you know, and, uh, but none of us has put that together yet as like collectively as a species that sloths are the ones we need to be worrying about because they're all heroes and super villains. Um, and the proof is on their faces. Tidy nose is better. Yes. I, I, I do think that you are right. Golden Rose. Um, Let's see. Uh, very cute. Love it. Um, hello, Vanya. It's good to see you. Welcome in. Um, counter shading. Yeah, just, you know, we're going to we're going to get into like really making this look like, you know, like the other reference images, um, reference paintings that I have that I did um, kind of in the past. And if we're lucky, we might actually get to do like two paintings. We might do um, the sloth and and the pig, actually, um, because I think that would be really really cool if we did that um because then we would have two um and it's this is not going to be like a super super long um time lapse video you know so it might be cool just to say like you know maybe our video is that we are doing a valentine's themed video and not necessarily just themed around the one painting that i have in it so that could be like kind of a cool idea um, and I want to, I kind of want to do this thing around here where I don't put like a straight solid line um, around this part. Because remember, we talked about how um, sloths have like this brighter portion of their face. So we kind of made like this little thing. I don't really want to put like a hard line um, around that. So I need to remember that. But I am going to put like a pretty hard line around the... Uh, around the eyes. I think that's important because that's kind of on brand, on sloth brand, um, if you ask me. I'm also going to shave away just a little bit of the outside of the face here because I think it needs a little more room right there. Um, and then I'll come back in over here to the eyes and we will, there we go. I'll make it kind of connect in nice. Um, okay, so we're we kind of, are getting like the head of our sloth in here. Um, and I'm very excited to kind of start moving into like more textury things. So let's do our little sloth mouth. Let's actually do that on another layer. I'm trying to separate everything because I am going to put um, shapes in between here. So we can do 
um, our little sloth mouth here. Let me grab a bigger brush and let's drop it down. And let's kind of come up a little bit. Nah, I think that looks like an otter. <laughs> this is like the difference between an otter and a sloth is just the fact that otters have that little dip in their top lip. So let's let's keep this straight across. Let's keep it straight across. <laughs> that did look like an otter, right? Like that's not me. Um, I think it did. Let me see if I can kind of. There we go. Um, I think that looks more like a sloth. Um, maybe um, we even, let me see if I, if what it looks like if we make his, um, maybe not quite like that. I mean, I'm gonna hide this layer. I, I do wanna also try and see what it's like if, um, oops, that's uh, cancel lasso. Let me get to my brush. Um, if we do like a smaller, that's not bad. That's not awful. Um, if he has like a tiny smile. Something like that. Maybe not, maybe the lip not going down that far. Um, let's bump this over and see. That's kind of cute. What do you guys think? Do you think it should be like a long mouth or do you think it should be like this kind of like middle sized mouth? I don't think that that's that bad actually. And that actually would give us, um, kind of room if we did want to do those little heart blushies, not bad. Um, and then also um, it would give us some space to do some like little, little hairsies. Like maybe he has little, um, you know, like little bangs, little sloth bangs. Um, I think, I think all sloths have like little bangs. Um, and then we could even do like little sloth beard marks. Um, and that those will be like visibly, like very uh, kind of subtly visible um, on the cheeks and stuff. That could be that could be cool. So he has like little sloth marks, and then maybe he has some um, down the side of his head here. I think that's kind of cute. I think it's I think that's starting to shape into like a really adorable little guy. To be perfectly honest, I think he's very precious. Um, I think it's working. Um, angry mouth, <laughs> just like, just like, this sloth is vicious. No, it's supposed to be for Valentine's Day. It has to be sweet. <laughs> um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba, 21 degrees where you're at. I'm not into that. I used to live where it like snowed us into our house um, and I am sick of it. I was, I was done. I live where it's warm now. No more of that. I don't know how you survive. Um, here for the sloth bangs. Thank you. Came for the, came for the digital painting, stayed for the sloth bangs. I appreciate it folks. Thank you all for your support and kindness. Um, I don't, I'm not going to draw in the eye shinies cause that was a little terrifying. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like this. And um, it's entirely possible that we put little lash marks, maybe? I've been saying he this whole time, but this like kind of gives it a more feminine kind of vibe. I don't know, it's not that, it's not bad. I think it's cute, it's, it's fine. Um, okay, there's our little sloth head. I'm gonna come over here, uh, kind of back out of our group there. Um, and I'm going to, um, oops, let me come back here. I'm going to transform and I'm going to make it smaller right in there. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to do is, um, kind of, let's come back into here. Let's grab our, where is our sketch? I think this is our sketch. Um, and let's kind of what I want is to have the sketch in the back, like the heart stuff um, kind of back, but it has the rest. I think the hearts were pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I really need to look at them now that I'm thinking of it. Um, uh, okay, so here's our sloth. Um, it's possible, what do you guys think? Do we need to put like a like neck and shoulders? I don't know if that's truly necessary. Let's. I'll try it. Let me grab this that I meant. So uh, another um, quick tip, if you're ever using Fresco and you make a 
um, a layer where you don't want it to be necessarily. You really just have to like it's you just have to click and hold. I'm just doing this with my finger and then I'm just like dragging it down and placing it where I want. And I just, you know, literally just kind of moved it down there. Um, so I am underneath here. Maybe I'll actually move this. Another thing you can do is if you need to move something out of a group, just drag it to um, the arrow there and it'll it'll bring it out of the group and then you can place it. Uh, I think maybe because I want to be able to transform the head separately from this and kind of move it like that. Um, continue and then um, I am going to kind of concept out this head and sh or neck and shoulders. Let me grab a, a darker gray um, and grab my brush. I'll make my brush larger um, and let's do something here. So um, I don't know if a, if a sloth has like a skinny neck. I'm not sure. I think I mostly see them, you know, with like like their body, like they're kind of like hunched over and their body is just like, you know, lounging or hanging out, you know? Um, maybe something like this is just, you know, okay, just to kind of give him a little more depth. Um, and then maybe we can do like the same bang, uh, like texture on like the shoulders and stuff. Maybe that would be cool. Um, so we'll kind of do like a little bust shape here. I think that um, looks pretty good. Let me make my brush a little bit bigger. Boom. Uh, maybe we'll bring this down just a tiny bit more. Grab my eraser. Cool. Yeah, I don't think that's bad. I think that actually looks pretty, pretty cool. Um, so it's kind of like just this, this shape, you know, and if I can add like a little sketch here, just to kind of give you some visualization reference, if I, you know, make my brush really small, it's, it's kind of in perspective. So it'd be like this and like that, you know? Um, and so maybe he, maybe I can put like little marks here for his arms, like his arms are there. And then maybe he has those little kind of shaggy, um, hair marks on his shoulders um and maybe we give him like you know kind of like a little like a blonde kind of tummy and then we can do that mark or those marks here to give him like some fur which would be kind of cool i think i think that's cute i think that looks nice i think that works um so now that we have everything like basically how we're going to do it we know that we're going to put a heart and everything in the background um but now we're going to kind of separate this out into um, more of a painting. Um, so I've got, if I, I am actually going to move this into a group and then I'm going to move this into that group and I'm going to open this and I'm going to grab this group and put it down underneath. Boom. Um, and I'm going to click my three dots here and do select multiple. And I'm gonna select all of these things cause I have my my line art for the head and I want them all on the same uh, thing. So I'm gonna say merge selected um, cause I don't, I'm not gonna change this head. Uh, so I have that, I have, I'm gonna delete this little layer um, and I'm going to bring this to the bottom here and keep it hidden. So, Maybe I will also ungroup these now that I know that I'm not going to move them around. Um, can I ungroup them? I should be able to. I know that I can. Let me. Oops, I did not want to create a new layer. Let's see. Let me... There we go. Ungroup layer. So you don't want to be in the group. You want to be outside the group and just select the whole group. And then you can say ungroup layers. Um, so now I have a uh, sketch of, in fact, I'm gonna bump this up to here cause it doesn't look very different and I'm going to merge down. So now I have my whole sketch on one layer and I have these shapes that are starting to come together to create my sloth. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn, I'm actually gonna turn this on a lower opacity. 
Um, so let's turn the opacity down on that. And you can see I actually, my, my head shape doesn't actually fit. You can see it's like, I, I had the sketch turned on um, so harshly that I did not actually see that my, my head shape doesn't match it. So I'm gonna turn that down uh, and I'm gonna come back and clean up this head. So um, let's come in here. Keep, you know what I keep doing is I have my keyboard because my PC is here too. And I keep reaching over to do hotkeys on my, on my keyboard. Um, but all of my tools are just like within thumb reach here. So um, let me zoom in here. Uh, let's grab my, yeah, I'm still on the hard pastel. I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit. Um, and then I'm just gonna come in here and make sure that this goes nicely to relatively the edge of my, um, of my head shape. And you, like if you're working and you find that you want it a lot cleaner than what I'm doing, that's fine. Um, you do not have to kind of leave it loose like I am, but I have found that doing the, um, this style that I'm doing today and this, you know, kind of like series of paintings in this style that I've been working on recently, um, I kind of like having, um, everything still like a little texture around the edges right there. So I'm going to leave it. Um, but you don't have to, you know, do that if you're following along and you're kind of, um, diving into fresco maybe for the first time that's cool um okay so now let's do these i want uh i'm gonna turn my brush a little larger i want a shape um that is just like this there's also a lot of ways that you can do this you don't have to do it exactly like i'm doing i just to be perfectly honest and this is something that i have said um before that i actually talked about recently um uh, if you folks caught the Hungry Boy stream last week, is um, sometimes the best way to do something um, in your process is not the best way because it's the most efficient. It's the best way because it's the most enjoyable for you. Um, and I found that when I have these like chalky textury brushes and I start to like get in here and like make these shapes of the head and form of these little characters that I've been drawing. It's like, it feels super buttery, like when I'm, when I'm painting and I just really love to do it. Um, so like I could, you know, use my lasso tool in here um, and I could make a lasso and fill in the lasso um, space with it if that's what I wanted, but I don't, I don't want to. I kind of just want to like come in here and, and, and shape these pieces and then I can uh, just erase around the edge and make sure that it kind of fits in with the head shape. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. And then what we will do, like once I start placing in all of these shapes of our little dude here, um, the next thing that we'll do is use clipping masks to start dropping in colors. So that's something that you folks could help me with right now, if you would like to. Um, you could choose some colors, like what what should we go for? I know that sloths are like a brown and gray, but I was thinking we could do like various grays with like hints of um, like Valentine's colors in it. You know, like I could put some pink, like some very soft, like blushing pink colors um, peeking through the, the light grays and things and then do the background like, you know, colors kind of valentines -y colors. So there's the eyes. I want that on a separate because I'm going to clip, you know, do clipping masks to that. Um, let's do like a, like a darker gray while we decide on what color colors we're going to use. Um, and I'm going to come in and get the shape of our eye down. Let me kind of draw that out. Boom, boom. I like it. It looks nice. Uh, maybe I will kind of trim that right there. Boom. There's I and let's come in here and do this other I. Kind of fill that in. And now we have eyes that we can do clipping masks to. Um, we can do, let's do the nose. And you can see how, what, I've, what I'm just doing is, I'm just like kind of breaking the head down into its basic shapes. 
You know what I mean? Um, I am going to start like seriously painting this and, and making it look really cool, but um, I'm making it as easy as I possibly can for myself here. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not making it something that is going to be super difficult for me to start doing and I want to stay within the lines of my piece so if I can use clipping masks and just you know kind of go along the lines with these shapes it does get everything done like super fast I don't have to really worry about um staying within the lines if things are clipped to shapes um, and I can kind of go hog wild with the textures and things that I that I like to use um and bring it into a 3d space in a really cool way so um I might, that might actually be everything that I'll do. I could technically do like a shape around, you know, his head right there, but I don't know that I will. We could try it, but let's try it. Um, no, you know what? I'll, I'll do that on a clipping mask. That's, that'll be easy to do on a clipping mask. Okay. So now we have our shapes and I'm not going to do the little, you know, the, the little heart blushies. I'm not going to do the mouth. Those are things that can come in later, um, with our, um, kind of touch up illustration. We got like, oh, we have almost, almost an hour left. Okay. We're, we are doing great on time. Um, we might get this whole thing finished before the end and then, uh, we can do the pig tomorrow. Okay. Um, Let's get down to business. Um, I am going to start with the colors for the head. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to hit this. If you guys see this little, um, this little uh, button here um, that has that, you know, just a square with a arrow pointing down, that's a clipping mask. So I've just made that layer a clipping mask. And um, let me see, uh, Emma was talking about, you know, the sloth kind of looking like a tomato and strawberry. Um, and uh <laughs> wants the bernie mitten brush i i agree i concur um do you use clipping masks to control where you add color i yeah so um wade i'm going here i'll just i'll just dive into it um i am gonna kind of go with what emma p was saying uh and i'm gonna um grab like a like a blushy kind of gray color maybe something like like this for the base. Um, and I'm gonna grab my favorite tool, my favorite brush uh, is the vinyl scraper brush for doing this kind of illustration. Um, the vinyl scraper brush is a brush that you can find. Um, I think it's few, man, no, not managed pixel brushes. If I go into all, yeah, here we go. So if I go into all and I hit this plus button, it will bring you to a place where you can add brushes. And what I did was I downloaded the Keith Herring um, brushes, which the Keith Herring brushes are available on the Adobe um, website. This is a really awesome brush pack that was created um, uh, in honor of Keith Herring. And um, you can find it. And I have grabbed a few of those brushes and favorited them. If you want to favorite brushes, all you have to do is um, select it and hit that little um, star there. Um, so I know I can always find it. Um, and it's really nice and textury. I'm going to kind of make my brush size bigger. Um, while I'm clipping masked like onto this head, I can come in and I can start to, um, like I want it to be like scribbly. So I can start, I can come in and I can start to really um, kind of jot in like this, this base kind of, um, color and shape. I could even make it bigger. This is a pretty large brush. Like the brush can get pretty big itself. Um, and then, um, I just keep like, I'm going to make a new layer and I'll make it a clipping mask. Something that I, that I like to do, this is a trick that I do like in Photoshop too, um, is if I know that I'm going to be continuing to create clipping masks and I don't want to have to make a new layer and then go out and hit that clipping mask, um, layer again, what I do is I make a clipping mask layer that's empty on top of, um, you know, the clipping mask I'm working with and I'll come in between and make sure that that clipping mask layer, um, is set to, a clipping mask above me and then every time i make a new layer because this one above it is still clipped to this head shape every layer i make underneath it will also be a clipping mask layer um to that same object so it just kind of removes that step for me um so yeah and i just i just come in here um and maybe we'll make it brighter i've got like this kind of um kind of red tone going that it might not be the move. It might not be what we keep, but I'm experimenting with it. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll come in and it allows me to, um, 
kind of get this interesting like texture without having to worry about like playing in the lines of my um of my piece here i'm literally just coming in and nothing will ever go out of the lines because i know that i have made um my head shape exactly the way i want it i'm not going to be changing it um and so it doesn't matter um, where i actually put this paint um i'm just putting it down and it's staying exactly where i want to keep it so um it's very it's very useful um, okay, so I've started to like add some detail. I don't know how I feel about like this like reddish color. Um, we might try like maybe a tan. Um, so I'm gonna actually hide, maybe I'll leave the red um, under here. Uh, we'll make a new layer. Let's grab like a like a tan color. Let's see what a, what a, what a nice tan does. Um, something something brownish tan. Let's see what that looks like. Um, oh, this is hidden. I don't want that to be hidden. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Make it a new layer. Um, oh, it's not clipped to that anymore. One second. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, so let's see. This is, that's kind of interesting. So this is like a very saturated kind of gray um and i think what i'll what i'll do is i'll or not gray a very saturated kind of brownish tan i think i'll actually put this on because what would be quite, kind of cool to do is to like have all these saturated colors like different colors under here like so um you know like this kind of pinkish gray and like this tan and then what i can do um, on another layer is come in and add the color i want it to be um, over the top and it'll have moments where that kind of like pushes through you know like you'll be able to see it um so maybe we make him like a tan sloth because sloths can be tan i believe um um adari hello it's good to see you um green moss and algae you, we could we could add like you know some little some green moss because sometimes cause sometimes sloths do have um moss and stuff like growing on them which is funny because they're like their own little ecosystems you know um, they are, it's kind of terrifying, um, lots of germs, um, but they're very sweet, uh, sort of, um, and they look really funny when they swim. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a swimming, um, sloth, but it's hilarious. Um, so there we have like this, this tan color. Um, and I think it's kind of cool because, you know, we've got the, we've got this tan, it's got like some of these other grays and things peaking. And then if we make another layer and we come in with like an actual, like gray um let's see what that looks like it might not do it you know we we gotta we gotta leave ourselves some room for experimentation here um this is it's not it's not bad it's a little bland i'm not sure how i feel about it um i don't know um but it's not horrible let's see what happens let me um, hide that. Let's see what happens if we make it like a straight, um, like a light tan and let's do like this part, part of the face. Cause I know that this part, we kind of want this part to be brighter than the rest of it. So I can, because I'm clipping mask, this is kind of what I meant is like, this would be super easy to do, um, because the clipping mask is on here. And all I have to do really is make sure it goes around this top part that I want. But aside from that, you know, it's, it's clipped to, um, the shape of the head. So we're good. Um, so let's kind of go around here. Um, that kind of gives us the shape that we want, but I really want something a little brighter as well. So let's get um, a, a color that's even closer to white here and let's start to kind of shape uh, this shape. Because what it might need is like not for the head to be darker, it's just for the face to be a little a little brighter. So let's try that. Yeah, we're kind of getting it going a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, kind of breaking it in. I'm also um, uh, totally willing to um, try any ideas or suggestions that you folks may have too. Um, Val has changed a lot since last time I saw her. Yeah, my hair is very long. I don't know if you guys noticed. I finally changed. Um, I finally changed my uh, 
let me get a gritty circle here um, or gritty square. Um, I finally changed my headshot <laughs> because I realized that the picture I've been using for like my Adobe headshot is so vastly different from like the way that I look now that um, when people jump on, they'll probably be like, oh, wow, this, okay, this is what she looks like. And then the stream begins and people are like, huh, that's not what was on the thumbnail. This is not, <laughs> this is not the same, the same gal. Um, but it is indeed, it's just, you know, it's been a while since I took that photo. Um, okay, so we've got, you know, this nice little, I think that looks cool. I think that's starting to look good. I kind of want to go around here and make some more definition between um, the, you know, the side of the head on the back. But what I can do with that is I can come underneath here. Um, let me see. Yeah, I can come over here underneath and make a new clipping mask. Um, and I can grab like a, you know, a darker color like this, and I can come around the edge like that and kind of start to chip away at um, the side of his head so that it looks a little more separated. That's starting to look good. I think that this is a good start. I think it's looking nice. You know, I'm kind of like starting to make it a little more 3D. He's very cute. Um, now let's do the same thing. So we got like his face and stuff kind of changed. Um, maybe, you know, actually what it, what it might need is, um, you know, some of this bright here also on top of the head, just kind of making it look like there's a kind of a light spot, you know, like a spot shine up here that gives it even more like 3D depth, you know, just make it look a little more like that. Um, okay. And then let's do the eyes. So the eyes, I, I think I'm going to grab like this kind of like pinkish brownish color that we've got going on here. And I'm going to do just a slightly darker uh, version of that. Maybe a little more, not too much more saturated. Let's do something like that. Um, and let's clip to this and let's see what that looks like. I know that it's supposed to be like almost black, but you know what we're kind of like, designing our own thing here. Um, that's not so bad. Uh, maybe we could take like a darker version. Let's clip to that. Um, and maybe we grab, you know, like a darker and like put that on and start to like shade up the side here with like some, some, some dark. So it is dark. It's just, you know, it's not so dark that it's unbearable um, and doesn't like fit the rest of the kind of the motif and vibe we're going for here. Um, that looks, well, that's actually not bad. That's not bad. Um, uh, let's see. I'd like to promote the fact that Val is awesome. You are very sweet and kind. <laughs> Steve, thank you. <laughs> you guys are good to me. Let me see how we're doing on time here. Oh yeah, we're doing very good on time. Um, I think we will, in fact, um, finish this up. Um, what I want to do before we take off today um, is I want to show you where you can find your time lapses because I want you folks to be able to like kind of tinker with it um, uh, in between streams if you like. And then I also want to show you um, where uh, you can like, you know, just a little bit about, about Rush. We're not going to do editing today. The video editing is going to take place tomorrow. Um, but I do want to kind of like open up Rush and be like, hey, you know, like, in the meantime, this is something you can kind of come in and noodle with a little bit and maybe get a little familiar with it on your own um, because it's a, it's very intuitive. It really is. Um, and I wasn't, you know, much of a video editor before I started jumping into Rush. And now I edit, edit videos every week um, because it's just, I feel very comfortable in the program. So I'm excited to be able to share that with you and show you how easy it is to create your own time lapses. Let me make another clipping mask. I'm going to grab just to be cohesive. I'm going to grab this dark color and I'm going to put a little bit of it. Oops. Um, I want to go underneath. There we go. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of it around the side. Is that still over the top? Yeah. I'm trying not to go over the top of um, our, here we go. I think that'll probably be it. There we go. I don't want to go over the top of our little lighter part here. Um, and I, I just want to be able to put, oops, um, some little hash marks, you know, kind of around the sides and blend the fact that we have this darker color, um, in our character into other places around our character now. 
Okay, so we got our, our sloth, we got our little eye stuff. Um, now, let's maybe, um, we'll fill in the eyes and the nose last. Um, let's kind of jump into the, the body because I've got this whole body shape down here that I haven't done anything with. So clipping mask, and then I'll make a clipping mask in between. Um, I'm gonna grab this dark color right here. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sprinkle this around. Um, I want to grab a little bit of the tannish color. Let's grab the tan. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna add like a lot of the same colors as the head in here, but I'm gonna try my best and make it look a little darker. Um, I don't want to have it as bright. I want it to be very obvious that there's like a difference between the body um, and the head, especially where they connect. So I've got these colors thrown in here. Let's grab some more of this color um, and just kind of, I want this like dark kind of shadow underneath here so that it looks very obviously like there is kind of a separation. Here we go. Um, there we go, very nice. Um, and then let's do another one. Let's grab some of our dark color, which is maybe a little risky. I don't know if it's too dark for us. We'll put it just like around the edges. I wanna make my brush a little bit bigger because it's kind of given me maybe too much grit. There we go. Let's get his little his little body in there. Maybe I'll even do, let's do it harder and see. That's ah, not bad. Okay, I was kind of shying away from it being a little too harsh, but that's actually not bad. It kind of gives it like a very distinct shadow now. Um, so we got our little shadow. Maybe I will come in and, oops, a little too big. Let's drop that down. Uh, maybe I'll come in and with my brush, my kind of textury brush and erase just a tiny bit. There we go. So we got our little sloth body kind of in here. Um, and I think we also talked about making a shape. Let's grab like this brighter color. I think we talked about making a shape of like, yeah, like that, like a little tummy shape, maybe a little wider. There we go. Like he's got a little different, a different color to his chest. Um, let's bring my eraser down. Let's kind of like chip away at the side of that. That looks good. Um, he's cute. He's so cute. Okay. Um, now let's do another clipping mask and let's grab this bright color so that we have like a similar uh, kind of vibe going here with the, with the chest. Um, and then let's grab a little bit of this white just a tiny bit and let's kind of put um, white on his chest there. Um, and then underneath this, I'm gonna come back um, to this layer, make a new one. And I'm gonna actually bring this other one back here just to kind of not have so much dark next to his chest. Okay, so he's starting to, he's starting to look very cute. <laughs> he's starting to look really, really cute. Um, and I do, one of the things that I do like to do is come over here and like, cause I am gonna actually turn the line off, the line art off for this. Um, what did I just, there we go. Um, let me click my line art. Um, I am gonna turn the line art off for this. So you can see how, because I did the shapes and stuff according to my line art, um, I still have to like make sure I put it in the face, but when I hide the line art, it looks pretty cool. Like it looks like, you know, it's in a 3D space and it's very simple and it's very fun and playful, you know, a little different from kind of some of the, the stuff that I usually illustrate, but I think it's looking pretty darn good. Um, so I'm gonna turn that back on so we can keep our eye on the ball. Um, and then let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, oh, eyes and nose, eyes and nose. Um, I think what I'm gonna do with the eyes, let's make a clipping mask, is, oops, I don't wanna clip the eyes. Um, I'm going to grab this very dark brown um, because, let's see, if I color in, yeah, this very dark brown, Let's color them both in and then maybe I'll come in with a black because I just like this idea that we can have this collection of colors 
within everything that's going on without um, having everything be like one flat monocolor, you know, like we're kind of trying to layer color and texture so that it just keeps that vibe. So I'm going to come in and kind of add some uh, some black in here. And what I think that does is make it look a little more approachable um, and kind of um, painty and textury and fun. Um, so let's do that. Let's maybe grab some of this and bring a little bit of this brown back down into the eye. Um, there we go, just a tiny bit. Boom. Um, and then let's do one more mask and let's grab some white. I'll make my brush small and I'm going to come in here and do, oops, maybe not that. Well, let's see. Let me zoom out so we can see our whole piece here. I'll just do like a subtle kind of scribble just to kind of give it a little eye shine. I want it to seem like uh, he's like kind of looking up, you know, and it's got like a little shine to it. That's not so bad. I don't, I don't think that's so bad. I think that's kind of cute. Maybe we'll leave it like that. Um, and then let's do the same thing with these same colors um, to the nose. Let's come over here, make a new clipping mask and another one. Oops, not clip the nose. Don't clip the nose. Um, there we go. And let's grab, you know, some of this brown throw some of that brown in there. Let's grab some black. And I am going to, let me actually make another layer. I'm doing my best here now with this black very deliberately to go around the, the edges here. If you can notice like what I'm doing is I'm really trying to make this nose not look like it's a flat um, shape, but I'm trying to kind of give it some dimension here. Um, so I've got like this, maybe that comes up around like so so it's got this you know this shape kind of 3d shape um let's make another clipping mask we'll grab maybe some you know some lighter some is that lighter than that yeah it's a little lighter kind of put this lighter color on top of the nose and then what i'm gonna do um i'll even add like this light brown just a little bit just to kind of give it you know, like some obvious, like, okay, it's got some light hitting the top of that nose there. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab some white yet again uh, on another clipping mask. I'll make my brush smaller. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of hit it around the edge like that. And then on the top here, um, just to kind of give it like this, let me grab my eraser because I don't, want it too close to the edge. Let's see. Let's try that again. Let me make my brush even smaller. I just want this tiny little swipe. Yeah, there we go. So he has like this rounded kind of vibe to the edge of his nose. We could do a tiny bit over there, but not too much. Um, and then it just kind of looks like this, the light is hitting the side edge, you know, over there. I could even make my brush even smaller. How are we doing on time? We've got another maybe 25 minutes. Hey, Sydney, it's good to see you. And Kaylee, it's good to see you. Um, welcome in. We are doing uh, a kind of illustration of our little sloth here. This is going to be something I'm going to post like as we start nearing Valentine's Day. So we've got this happy little sloth here. He's going to have little heart blushies um, on his cheek. And we are going to give it kind of a um, like a like a pinkish nice um, background. Um, and I think too, another thing that we could benefit from this as well is maybe doing like a um, a clipping mask to the full group of the sloth um, to give it like more of a pink vibe. Um, forgive me, my, my nose itches and I'm trying my very best to like be as polite about itching my nose as I can on the stream. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, that looks pretty good. Um, got our little sloth. I think it definitely, especially with all the paint and everything in there, I think it definitely looks like um, a sloth now. It doesn't look like an otter anymore. Uh, also, Tara Vanderveer, um, welcome in. It's good to see you. Let's see. Um, Wade tapping on the microphone, talking to everybody. It's good. <laughs> Thank you, Wade. Um, good to see you, Celine. Uh, welcome in. Let me just make sure that I haven't missed anybody else. This is a, a panda sloth. It could be a panda sloth. It does kind of, it does kind of seem like a, like a panda sloth. It has those vibes. 
Um, all right, let's see. We got our guy. Um, we do need to add some very subtle details to the face. We got to add like a little, you know, some lines, some of the directional lines for the hair. Um, we're gonna have to add the lines for the mouth. So let me make a new layer above my uh, line art layer because we're gonna hide that. We're gonna hide this line art layer. Remember? Um, I am gonna grab my brush. I am going to grab the hard pastel, I think. I think that's what we're gonna use. Um, oh, I'm using B. Uh, I am gonna grab this brown color. Let's see, maybe not hard pastel. What's soft, soft pastel? Oh yeah, maybe soft pastel. Okay. I am gonna, let's make my bad. That's a nice little arcing line. That's nice. GG Val, steady hand. I, my eraser and just kind of, I like, like I said, I like having like these rough edges to things and there we go. Um, so he's got his little smile. He's very cute. Uh, another thing that we can do is grab, let's, you know, this, this brown and maybe we cruise up here and just give it maybe actually we subtle line. Let's see. Uh, I am gonna do like a few undos here. There we go. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be a separate piece of this, you know, this piece. Uh, maybe right there. Nah, that's too much. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Just very subtle. Then let's kind of do, remember we kind of talked about doing something with the, with the hair here. So let's kind of grab a darker color. Just slightly. I'm gonna make my brush smaller. Boom. And let's do these little, even, even, well, let's make it a little bit bigger than that. Um, let's do these little brush marks, these little, you know, these little beard marks we talked about doing here. He's got, you know, his little, his little fur marks. And let's grab our darker color. Let's let's use let's use this color. Let's use that. And we're gonna do just a few on top of the head here. Oops. I don't know about like overbearing, but I do want him to have like little fur marks here. Maybe those are too dark. Those ones might be too dark. Um, yeah, I think those are too dark. Let's take those down. I mean, we might, maybe we don't need them on top of the head. You know, maybe that's not necessary. Uh, there we go. I think I turn these little ones off, these suckers down here. Okay. Um, let me turn the liner off. Ah, uh, some of these didn't really come through. Um, let me kind of draw them in a bit better. Fine. But I was, I think I was looking too hard at the uh, sketch underneath. There we go. Let's do like a little soft, little soft one there. Here we go. Let's bring this one up. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about these. I don't know if they're coming through as well. Um, for now, I'll just I'll just leave it there for now because I mean it's not it's not terrible. It's just not what I had envisioned. Um, but that's okay. Does anyone like Harry Potter? I love Harry Potter. Um, Slytherin house, best house. Sorry. <laughs> so this to, to appreciate them. Um, that's just how it goes. Sorry. Um, I want to know who's every, every, you know, everybody's Harry Potter house. Now I'm going to, I'm going to need to know, I'm going to need to know your, your house and I'm going to need to know your Patronus. Okay. 
There we go. So we got our little sloth. I'm gonna come out here away from the group. Um, and now that we have our, our cute little illustration, um, what I can do is I can even make, uh, like I mentioned before, a layer that clips to the whole group because then I can come in because I know that we're gonna do some like pink um, in the background. I can come in with some pink um, and we'll fill this whole thing and, and see what works. That screen wasn't bad. I could turn it on the lower opacity just to give it a subtle bit. I'm, I like to just honestly go down all of these. Like you guys kind of know that I have like go-to ones. Um, but uh, eh, that's not bad. Just some subtle pink from a soft light. That might be, be good. Uh, but I still like to I still like to go down the list and look at every one because sometimes you never know. Sometimes something happens and you're like, think soft light is a winner um, and I'm gonna turn the opacity down just a little bit. Uh, so the difference between that is, yeah, that's nice. So it went from being like, you know, brown to now I have like this nice subtle kind of like, brown. so real quick, I'm gonna grab, um, maybe we'll grab this color. Uh, we'll fill that with a pixel. So that's like, you know, the color that's in our sloth already. Um, and then I'll make a new layer and I'll grab something that is much lighter, but in the same avenue. Um, I will make our brush much bigger. Oh, let's grab our vinyl scraper too, by the way. We want the vinyl scraper. We'll come up here and make our brush very, very large. Um, and then I'm going to kind of put in, add our heart. Uh, we are coming up on like towards the, the end of our show here. I would say maybe we have like 15 people um, take a peek at Rush um, just to kind of show you folks um, what we could be getting into tomorrow. So I'm going to turn that up here. It might be too pink for me. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll kind of crank the pink down just to make it a little bit different, but not quite. That's not bad. Um, okay. And then uh, let's grab um, Soft Pastel again. Um, and I'm going to leave let's see, I'm going to leave notes for myself. And this is something is uh, kind of leave little notes for me that will remind me what I was doing when I was working on this last and what I had plans for. So let me, I'm going to kind of make this down into the, I don't know, let's go back over here. Um, I know that I want to add some kind of heart in the back and giving myself like a little cue in the back here that okay you know next time i open this make sure i put um the uh the heart that i want in the back um and then i also remember we in our sketch we kind of discussed having all those little floating hearts so maybe in come in here and do like little um little hearts you know kind of scattered around uh for our early Valentine's uh, kind of vibe. Or maybe, you know, heck, maybe I, I realize like between now and the next stream, you know, I really don't like just having like a big heart in the background. Maybe that's lame. Maybe I, maybe I don't like that. Um, but the thing is, is I um, overlap. In fact, I think it kind of breaks the mold from being a little lame to like kind of break the mold. Um, and we could even do like an outline around the big heart too of, of white and then just have it kind of bisect um, some of these other hearts on here. And that could be cute. Um, I'm not sure if if that's what we'll do. We'll kind of see you when we get there tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of put out um, uh, the time lapse stuff because like I said, we, you know, the, the point of like doing these um, and we'll jump into um, doing our little, our little uh, pig um, illustration um, tomorrow. Uh, but um, we are kind of creating paintings here because we are going to be diving into um, some folks are having some issue with buffering. Um, can everybody see me all right? Is there, um, I hope not. I hope everything is, is good. I hope there's no buffering. Um, but I'm going to pull up real quick um, the time lapse um, just so you folks can see. Uh, whenever you export um that you can see me okay um whenever you see you you go to export your images most people they export and they export like a png or um a jpeg 
when you go up here to the share button up at the top, um, and you can say quick export, send to Illustrator, share a link, live stream, if you want to start a live stream. But I go here to publish and export. Um, and I have quick export, export as, send to Behance project, but there's time lapse export right here. And if you click time lapse export, it'll give you this video. And what this video is, is the, a, a record of every stroke that you have made in Fresco. And it doesn't, then it won't record it. It'll go backward and then it'll make a recording of the next stroke you make. So I basically have, as long as I remember to undo instead of erase over the things that I don't like, I have a perfect time lapse from start to finish of what I did here. So let's check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and press play and we're gonna peek at it. Um, so I have my, you know, my initial thing that I did. I don't know if it's actually showing, if it's capturing. It's showing me, but I don't think it's capturing to you guys. Well, that's fine, um, because what I can do actually is I can export it um, and then I'll show you. Oh, no, there it goes. There it goes. Boom. Okay. It took a little took a little time for the, um, the screen capture of my iPad to kind of go through it, but you can see how it shows me kind of like starting to paint all of the stuff in. I'm getting all the stuff, you know, all of the um, the shapes and things in there. And it just goes through and shows like how um, how I showed it, uh, how I showed it off to you guys, how we how we created this little sloth together. And it's really fun to watch. It's fun to see. Um, it's fun to um, kind of watch. I think it's an interesting thing too, because I can watch it and I can kind of grow from it. So I can see like, okay, if there's something, um, if there's something about my painting that I don't quite like, watching a super fast time lapse of your entire process in just a few moments is actually really, really useful. Notice that, like, as I like, if I press play here again, as I start um, sketching, I can see like places where like I didn't like the eyes yet, or I didn't like the nose, or I didn't like um, the shape of the head. Um, and when I watch the time lapse, I'm looking at it and I can see, I can like, you know, figure out the solutions to some of the issues in my head. And, you know, the time lapse is not going to go that, that way if it's a recording of me having painted something I didn't like very much. But when I watch it real quick, I can be like, oh, you know what? I should bump that to the end. You know, I should, I should bump this up and to the left or something like that. And you can kind of spot the issues in your own process, which is really, really cool. Um, and then, so yeah, all I have to do is hit export here in the corner if I want to export it. And then it allows me to, um, ha it tells me how big my video file is. I can save it to, uh, they could just say save video. I can say add to shared album, save to files, save to um, Pinterest. And I can also add it directly to my Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, so that's very, very helpful. Like literally, if you have it in your Creative Cloud files, you can just open it in another program if you want to go edit it in another program. Um, and real quick, I'm going to switch over to my um, face cam because we've got just a handful of minutes um, left here before um, I take off. And I would like to pull up Rush and actually kind of show you folks how um, I... Uh, how I use that and what you folks can expect tomorrow after we um, finish working on our pig. So if I can jump over real quick to show just my face, I'm going to transfer over to um, Adobe Rush. Let me pull up my Cintiq here real quick. I've got a, um, a little wardrobe change for my, for my devices. Let me open up Rush. Give me one moment. Okay, I'm going to do, do, do. Give me one second. Okay, let me share my Rush screen so you folks can check it out. Give me one sec. Um, I'm just like bumped in just like a random um, image here. Uh, let me share real quick to you so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I, I haven't started a like 
with the footage just now because it'll take a um, a, a little bit of time um, to to show you. But I can flip over to my rush here now, and you can see like what I've done is I've just like added an an image. This is an image that I did for um, the uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Actually, the first Daily Creative Challenge that I ever did. Um, um, I made like these these things with the shape tool and frame tool and, and all that good stuff. Um, and it was fun, but I've just got something in here um, so that you can see. Um, basically what we're gonna be doing tomorrow is I'm gonna come in with my uh, time-lapse of my sloth and the time-lapse uh, most likely of the pig as well. I think we'll have two cute little Valentine's creatures to kind of throw in here. And it'll make the time-lapse longer than like a couple of moments. Um, cause we do want like something more, a little more substantial for folks to kind of jump in and watch like on my YouTube channel or, um, on Instagram or, you know, whatever it is I'm making it for. If you want to make a TikTok, you can make a TikTok here, um, in, a, a Adobe Rush as well. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll throw our, um, our, uh, time-lapse footage in here. Um, and then we're gonna start kind of coming over here and exploring the graphics. So uh, we're gonna kind of try some transition graphics. Um, we're gonna experiment with those. We're gonna experiment like some cute little overlays and things um, that we can use to make our video um, very special. Um, we're gonna come into titles and we're gonna show how, um, I'm gonna show you folks how you can put like little call outs if there's something that you wanna do as far as like highlighting a tool or highlighting something something that you're doing in your videos, um, we will do that. And um, we will also jump in to doing some transitions because I have an animated intro and outro that I am gonna want to add to um, my, my video, obviously, so that it's cohesive with my other YouTube videos. Um, and I am going to want to um, kind of do like some fading in and out um, and showing how you can transition between the actual meat of your content and some of your other you know, elements that you need to add to your videos, like little subscribe notifications and things like that. Um, and then we can jump into, if you really want to add color presets, you can. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit because it's kind of an interesting thing. Some of you folks, if you're making a TikTok of yourself and you want to put like a filter over your video, you can do that. Um, we're gonna dive into speed. So this is interesting for those of you who are not working in Fresco and you're not exporting a time-lapse directly to um, your Creative Cloud. If you have done something where you've like recorded the screen and you've recorded yourself painting in Photoshop or designing an Illustrator or um, something like that, that you would like to share, um, you can actually come in here and you can speed up a clip. You can, you can make a time-lapse out of regular footage in Rush very, very easily just by changing the speed. Um, you can even change the clip duration. Like if you know that you've got a 15 second uh, intro and a 15 second outro and your video can only be four minutes, then you can change the duration to three and a half minutes to make your video the exact length that you want, which is really cool. Um, you can come in. We'll, we're going to be adding audio. I have a song that I'd like to put, you know, that plays during the clip. So we'll we'll go over how to add audio. Um, we will also um, go over how to um, crop images and crop uh, video footage. Um, and we even have um, some some other advanced um, kind of things that we're going to go into. So I'm going to show you how to like hook it up. We're going to soup up a video. All of you folks will be able to leave tomorrow with um, basic knowledge of kind of how to create a uh, a, a tutorial or um, process video very nicely. Um, and like I said, I have an intro and an outro that I use for my YouTube videos, but I'm gonna show you how you can create your own dynamic, nice looking intro and outro with your own social media handles and everything um, for this video just within Rush, if that's not something that you have animated for yourself with your own branding, we're gonna do it. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, and I, I can't wait to kind of jump into it. Um, I am at the end of our um, stream here though. So I do need to say goodbye to all of you folks. Um, it's been a blast. It's been so much fun being able to hang out. Um, I can't wait to come back tomorrow. Um, 
and do some more. If you folks would like to follow me on social media, you guys can find me um, at voodoo.val um, on Insta description of the video um, down below. So you guys can check me out on Behance too, if you like. Um, thank you so much um, for joining me. Please stay tuned for the next segment and I will see you folks tomorrow afternoon. Adios everybody and happy designing.